Earlier today we posted our exercise of the week, which uh, we chose to be the bretzel, and we received a lot of Facebook hits, a lot of interest, and we also received a comment uh, reminding us not to forget about the bretzel 2.0. So we wanted to do a, a quick recap of the bretzel, and then while we were lucky enough to have Gray in the studio today, um, we thought we would have him show the bretzel 2.0 as well. Um, for everyone else out there on Facebook who has not gotten to see this yet. And since Melissa asked the question, she gets to be the victim. So uh, quick, quick history, Bretzel is named after Brett Jones because when we were shooting the video, Kettlebells from the Ground Up, uh, I knew I was going to introduce this stretch, but I didn't tell Brett because he was already on the ground and I knew this stretch would specifically catch Brett. So Brett turns into a pretzel, we get the word Bretzel. Uh, the Bretzel 2.0 is just another way to put the same guy in a pretzel. But outside of all that, uh, the thing I want you guys to know is most of the time when we discuss stretches or mobility techniques, people focus on one body part or one muscle. The, the Bretzel and the Bretzel 2.0, all, all humor aside, actually stretch movement patterns, not muscles. They're going to get a whole chain of muscles. If you're familiar with Tom Meyer's work, anatomy trains, if you're familiar with uh, different types of fascia lines and the serape effect of a lot of the muscles, we're going to hit in the bretzel anterior chain muscles. We're going to hit pecs, we're going to hit abs, we're going to hit quads, hip flexors. Uh, bretzel 2.0, posterior chain muscles, lats, glutes, hamstring, and maybe IT band, a little bit of lateral stuff as well. So um, a lot of people rush these stretches. And rushing these stretches makes about as much sense as rushing yoga. We were just having a discussion in the office that the whole postures and positions we put you in in yoga are for us to watch you start shallow breathing or go into a little bit of a panic attack. So I'm pretty sure that if you do these stretches right, one of them is going to take you into not a painful place, hopefully. If it does, you got something else wrong. Take you into an uncomfortable place. Stop and learn to breathe. Chances are your shallow breathing is making the tightness. And you might think it works the other way around. Your tightness is making you breathe shallow, but I would, I would caution you, it's so connected, sometimes your emotional response to a, a challenging position actually aggravates the situation. So stop and breathe, listen to every one of these rules. First thing we want to do is make sure you're, you're lying on your side and stacked. We use that term to make sure that one shoulder is stacked completely on the other shoulder. Use some neck support here and don't use too much because as she gets into the end of this stretch she's going to roll to her back. But use some type of neck support here because I don't want any of these muscles on right here. First part of the stretch. Bring this thigh not just to 90 degrees, but go ahead and come on past 90 degrees a little bit. That's how we protect the low back. The bottom hand goes on the top leg. Top leg, bottom hand, that's going to need to have a good firm grip. Sometimes we can grip the underside. So if you want to shoot this hand under, you can also grip that way if that's more comfortable. There's no right or wrong way. Just keep sure, make sure that thigh is about 100 degrees and that you've got a good purchase on the thigh. You're going to need that later. So grab back on top just so they can see your hand. Now, this leg is already in a stretch position. Let's get it in a comfortable position and see if we can get the hand. I see a lot of this going on. I would almost prefer you grab a towel around your ankle, but if you can choke up really good, go ahead and get that tension on. Now, a lot of people are already starting to roll backward here, and that's the biggest mistake I see in this stretch. Let's get this thigh in extension first. This foot does not have to come onto the ground yet, but I do need this in line with the spine. So we're getting hip flexor, quad, maybe even some IT band here. We're getting some piriformis. We're getting some glute right here. Now, the very first thing I do is say, take a breath and try to roll the shoulders. And she's already got some pretty good mobility there. You're probably feeling more in the lower body than the upper body. Some people will only move this far. But what I want you to do is watch how they're breathing. Keep breathing right here. Slow it down and let your exhale take twice as long as your inhale, okay? Inhale through the nose, exhale really long and deliberate. Now, we get to a point where you can't go any further. You're hitting that barrier. I would encourage you back off about an inch to a good breathing point, and now you're gonna challenge your leg position. And the way you do that is you're gonna take this leg and try to kick it away 
try to break that grip. You're going to take this knee and try to kick it away, try to break that grip. All this tension right here, abs, pelvic floor, glutes, quads, stop, relax, and open up. And most people pick up a few inches. Changing tension down here allows better movement up here. So, as you can see, we've got the intercostals, we've got the abs, we've got the low back. Neck is supposed to be in a very comfortable position, really well aligned, and she should not be fighting this position at all. If she wants to turn a little further, make another challenge, and relax the challenge, and it's basically contract, relax, or hold, relax, depending on the way you cycle this. The most important thing that I want Melissa to learn here is I want you to immediately go to the other side and say, am I symmetrical or am I asymmetrical because we're stretching a pattern. You're going to feel it somewhere different on each side, and you may feel it somewhere different than someone else stretching. There's no right or wrong answer here. If your greatest tension is in this hip, that's where you might feel this. So we're not doing this for one particular part. We're doing this to see if you can get in this position, and you can still breathe, and you're symmetrical on both sides. Real quick, let's do the Bretzel 2.0. So the first thing we're going to do is make this thigh square to the room. So this thigh right here is square to the room. Then we're going to take our hands, probably a foot to a foot and a half off of our body, and just try to position, position them. Now right now, without stretching, my chest is pointing that way. My thigh is pointing that way. So I'm just going to spend some time breathing, trying to square my shoulders to the same position. I'm doing a lot better than I am. Now, what I want you to do right here, let's back your hands up to about there. A little more upright, chest tall, head tall, and now really twist and square your shoulders. Okay? Now, we could follow the line of tension in her if we wanted to. It goes from the lateral leg around this glute right up into this lat just a little bit. But in no time is her low back flexed in this stretch, so it's a great low back neuromuscular fascial stretch, but it doesn't flex the delicate lumbar spine for those of you. Now, uh, I will caution you, if you've already got a medical problem, this is not a cure to a medical problem. So if you've got low back pain saying, I can't wait to try that, uh, let's make sure we know what your low back pain is first. Um, I'm not saying it won't help, but let's get you diagnosed before we turn this into a uh, uh, home treatment. Anyway, you're going to spend some time just really trying to get this turn. And one of the best ways to get the turn is turn your head and try to see the corner back there behind you. Just keep turning your head, your shoulders naturally turn. Good. Now, this is another place in the stretch that it gets messed up. I'm going to have you take this hand and unweight it and slide your fingers under that palm. The reason I do that is I'm absolutely sure, even from 30 foot away if I'm training her, that there is no weight on this hand. All her weight is on this hand. This stretch only works if this elbow stays straight. So that elbow is going to stay straight. And what she's going to do now is lean and fall this way. Lean and fall. Lean and fall. You get to a point where that elbow wants to bend, cycle a breath, and lean and fall. And she should get a pretty good stretch. Come back up. This stretch can be taken all the way down this fascia line by putting the leg there, holding that up, post on the elbow, and do the same fall away. Same fall away. Keep that elbow. See if you can breathe right here. Learn to breathe right there. If it's difficult, back off an inch and get your breathing back. Now, as I said before, the Bretzel, anterior chain, Bretzel 2.0, posterior chain, do it slow. It can be an assessment before it becomes a stretch or an exercise. Left-right differences should be attacked. And everybody's going to have either more of an anterior chain challenge or a posterior chain challenge. And so it's going to basically be to your body structure and your activity type. Um, which one of these did you get a bigger stretch? This one. This one? Okay. There's no magic in those two stretches. And, and obviously, if there needs to be some tissue prep before you do that, foam rolls, stick work, trigger point work, somebody's doing some uh, soft tissue on you, obviously you're going to become aware of some of those restricted areas. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with maybe feeling uh, hamstring or IT band lateralis on that and going and hitting your foam roll first or feeling the quad on your uh, bretzel stretch. 
So hit the foam roll, go right back to it. And most of the time, five minutes of struggle in that stretch can be taken down to one minute if you use your foam roll. So uh, nothing's an island, everything works together. Um, if you don't see a big difference in the uh, posterior chain Bretzel 2.0, anterior chain Bretzel, then on a day you're working anterior chain, basically your push stuff, do the Bretzel, and on a day you're working a lot, of, a lot more pull, uh, do the 2.0. But um, yeah, uh, the, the most important thing, if I were quizzing uh, a lot of people who are certified and say come into an advanced workshop, if I were quizzing the class, here's the response I'd want. What's the purpose in doing a corrective strategy or a corrective stretch like the Bretzel 2.0 or uh, the Bretzel? And the response I want to hear is not what it's going to fix, but what does it expose? Does it uh, alert us to an anterior posterior pattern restriction? Does it expose us to an asymmetry? And how quick does it change? Those are the kind of responses I want from people who are, are certified and out there really using this stuff to help. For more information on the Bretzels, go to functionalmovement.com. If you have topics that you would like to see us address in future episodes, please email ideas to functionalmovement.com.